Hi guys, this is Kumar Bharat. In the in this lecture, we are going to learn about Mohr circle. So before going to Mohr circle, I would like to introduce two terms. The first one is principal plane, and the second one is principal stress. So what is principal plane? Principal plane is the plane in which there is no component of shear x, or the plane which is having only axial stresses. Now the magnitude of the axial stresses. Uh, is called principal stress. Now, what is Mohr circle? Mohr circle is a graphical representation of the various types of stresses that act on any oblique or inclined planes. Now, the various cases in which we can use Mohr circle are described here. The first one is axial stress of unequal intensities. The uh, here the unequal unequal intensities means the magnitude of the stresses might be unequal. The second one, axial stress of unequal and unlike. Here, the unequal means that the magnitude might be different, and unlike means that the nature, the nature of the stresses might be different, like axial, uh, like tensile stress or compressive stress. Now, the third one, which is most important one, the axial stress accompanied by the simple shear stress. Here, it means that it, it, it must be having uh, the equal unequal intensity stress. Or unlike unlike stress, which will be accompanied by simple shear stress. So, guys, I would like to explain you the various axial conventions used in Mohr circle. The first and the basic is the vertical axis in Mohr circle will always represent the component of the shear stress. Similarly, the horizontal axis of the Mohr circle will always represent the component of the axial stresses, which might be compressive or tensile. Now the third one, third one. For the third one, I would like to go through this plane. Now, uh, sorry, this diagram. Here you can see that the sigma one, that the the shear stress acting in the sigma one is along the sigma one is in clockwise direction, and the clockwise direction will be always in negative y-axis. Similarly, you can see here as the arrow indicates, it is always in counterclockwise direction, and the counterclockwise direction always. Yeah, this should be taken as positive y-axis. Now I will uh, draw, uh, now I will draw more circle. Here I have taken a horizontal line, and let's suppose it as a point A. Now uh, let's suppose that the sigma one is greater in magnitude with respect to sigma two, as I have earlier explained you that the axial stress will be always uh, in horizontal axis. So let sigma one be. In greater magnitude, so I have taken it longer with respect to sigma two. This is sigma two. Actually, this, uh, this is uh, describing the magnitude of the force. Let it point B and point C. Now we will try to plot the shear stresses. You can see that along the sigma one, it is going in clockwise direction, and as I told you earlier, that clockwise direction. Clockwise shear will always be negative. So for sigma one, we will take it negative y-axis. This is like this is tau one. Actually, this this line is representing the magnitude of the shear stress. Uh, so similarly, for sigma two, you can see that this is sigma two, this is sigma two, and uh, this is acting in counterclockwise direction. And for counterclockwise uh, shear, uh, we will take as positive y-axis. So. This one is positive. Now we will try to bisect these two points. So uh, through uh, through the pass we can bisect it. Let let uh, let assume that this is the midpoint of B and C, which is assumed to be point O. Now we will try to connect these two lines through O. Let this point be. D and E. Now we will uh, draw a circle by taking BC or OE as a radius. So guys, uh, this can't be per, uh, a perfect circle. So now, now this is our reference plane. Here the plane B E is our reference plane. 
Reference plane means here that every every angle measurement will be taken from this plane only. Now, in this right now we, uh, we can see that the inclinement of the oblique plane is at angle theta. So we will take two theta with respect to this reference plane in order to find the normal stresses and shear stresses of the oblique plane. So here we are taking two theta angle. Let's suppose this is our two theta angle. This is the this is actually showing the position of the oblique plane with respect to the reference plane. Now let this point be. F. Now we will uh, project this line on the horizontal axis. Let this point be G. So now uh, the AG, the point AG, the, which means that the distance between the AG will represent the normal tensile stress and the distance between FG will represent shear stress. So guys, now uh, let this point be H and this point be I. So the distance A and H this is the intersection of the circle with the horizontal axis. The distance A H will represent major principal stress and the distance A I will represent minor principal stress. Now, as we all know that uh, the vertical, the vertical distance always represent the shear, shear factor. So guys, you can think that uh, if, uh, this this will be the maximum. This this length, A M, sorry O M, O M will be the maximum length that can be made through this circle. So the O M will represent the maximum amount of shear stress, maximum shear stress. Now. We will join the point A, this is our reference point, with F. So, the distance AF, the distance AF will represent the resultant shear stress. And the angle, this one angle, this angle is alpha, this angle will represent the resultant angle. Now, uh, let this let this reference plane make an angle of two phi with our horizontal axis. So, the angle two phi, where phi, where phi is the angle, where phi is the location of the principal plane. So this angle 2 phi will represent the location of the principal plane where uh, the diagonal is twice of the uh, angle made by the uh, uh, angle made by the location of the principal plane. So one angle will be phi first principal plane location and second will be phi plus 90 degree. Second principal plane location. So guys, I would like to explain you more circle through this example. Here the body is subjected to a tensile stress of 40 newton per meter square and 20 newton per meter square and a shear stress of 20 newton per meter square and this is the angle of the oblique plane. Now, we need to find normal tensile and shear stress. Second one, major and minor principal stress and the location of the principal plane. Third one, resultant stress on oblique plane with angle. Fourth one, maximum shear stress. So, before drawing more circle, we need to define a suitable scale. So, I will take 1 centimeter is equal to 10 newton per meter square, which means that 
each centimeter corresponds to 10 newton per meter square of stress. Now, we need to draw a horizontal line and let the reference point be A. Now, we will sketch the uh, amount of this uh, shell, uh, sorry, uh, tensile stress. First one is 14 newton per meter square, which will be around 4 centimeter. This is sigma 1, which is 40 newton per meter square. This length is around 4 centimeter, we have assumed it. Let this point be B. Now, sigma 2 is 20 centimeter, which will correspond to 2 centimeter, which will be half of this length. Sigma 2, which is 20 newton per meter square. This is point C. Now, the next thing we have to do, we have to plot the shear stress. Now, we can see that this is in clockwise direction. We have to just see these two faces. This indicates clockwise direction and this also indicates clockwise direction. As I have told you earlier that clockwise direction will always be in negative direction. So, here this uh, uh, shear 30 newton, this shear 30 newton and 30 newton is in clockwise direction, so it will be negative around this centimeter. Which will correspond to this 40 newton per meter square stress. Similarly, this uh, this is in counterclockwise direction, which will be always positive. Let me assume that this is the centimeter. Okay. No. We will bisect these two lines. Let the bisect point be go, and we will connect this by taking radius OE or OD. We will try to draw a circle. This is our motion. Now, here it is mentioned that, now this is this line, ED is our reference plane. This ED is our reference plane. Now, here it is mentioned that the oblique plane is at, is at 45 degree. So, we have to always uh, draw a twice diagonal angle mentioned with respect to the reference plane. So, we will take around 90 degree. Make it approximately be 90 degree, which is 2 theta is equal to 90 degree, and let this point be F. Now, as I uh, as I told you earlier that now we will project OF on horizontal line. Let this point be G. So AF, sorry, so AG, AG will represent. Normal tensile stress. Actually, what we have to do, we have to just measure this length and convert with suitable scale. The, the, the magnitude which uh, what we get is the normal tensile stress. And the Fg is shear stress. We have to just measure this length and convert according to the scale that we have assumed. Now, so we, we found the two, uh, two of our results that is normal tensile stress and shear stress. So, this one we have done. Now, the second one, measure on minor principal stress. Let this point be H and this point be I. This is actually the intersection of the horizontal line with the stream of the circle. So, AH is major principal stress and AI is minor principal stress. So we have found we are, what we need to do is we need to just measure this length and convert to suitable scale. Similarly, we need to measure this length AI uh, and convert it to suitable scale. So this will give us the value of the major principal stress and minor principal stress. So and uh, now we need to measure this angle. Let this angle be 2 phi, where phi represents the location of the principal plane. Location of principal plane. So 
what we will do is that we will measure this angle and we will half that uh, we will just divide it by 2 in order to get phi the value of phi will be the location of the principal plane that will be the location of one principal plane and so the corresponding other principal plane will be phi plus 90 degree this will be the location of the, the second principal plane so we found that the major and minor principal stress and location of the principal plane so we have done this now third one Resultant distress and oblique plane with angle. So we will find the resultant distress. So what is the resultant uh, stress? We need to find. So just we will connect this AF. We will connect AF and we will measure the distance and we will convert it with suitable scale. So AF will be resulting in stress and this angle. This angle is alpha. Alpha is the anchor of the resultant. So, uh, one thing I like to mention that we don't need to have this angle. This alpha will be uh, as it is, it is present by the product. Now, so we have the resultant stress that is AF and the oblique plane angle that is alpha. Now, this is the now the fourth part, maximum shear stress, guys. Uh, this, uh, uh, I, as I told you earlier that shear stress will be always represented by the vertical lines. So guys, what will be the maximum shear stress? It will be obvious that this, this will be the maximum shear stress because uh, this line will represent the maximum amount of vertical length. So this is the maximum shear stress, stress that is H. So, AH is equal to maximum shear stress. So we will measure this AH and convert it with suitable scale in order to get the magnitude of shear stress. So through this we have completed the most of the time.